All right, film geeks, today's class is all about The Hill, the new faith-based film starring Dennis Quaid. Let's talk about it. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode of All Right, Let's Talk About It. My name is Savannah. I am your host. I do film reviews and film industry commentary. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. So let's talk about The Hill. Now, yesterday for me was a double feature. I saw Golda, which I've done a review for. It should be available for you if you want to go listen. I saw that one about 3 p.m. And then I saw The Hill at 8 p.m. I almost didn't go see it because I was starting to get a little tired. (laughs) Been a long day for me. So, but I managed and I want to talk about it. So The Hill was a movie. Like most movies, I just happened to see the trailer while I was in the movie theaters. And you know, I'm in the movie theaters every single week, like without fail. So I'm not even exactly sure. I can't remember which movie would have shown this trailer. It might've been The Sound of Freedom. The Sound of Freedom had some very interesting trailers. There are a lot of movies that are coming out from that studio um, that look to be very, very good. I'm, I'm very excited, looking forward to what's coming out of that studio, but we are getting on a bit of a tangent. We're talking about The Hill. So this is a faith based sports film about Ricky Hill. Ricky Hill is was a baseball player who had a degenerative, I can't say that word, I've been trying to say it for the last two days, degenerative spinal disorder that caused his spine to basically deteriorate. So by the time he was a high schooler, he had the spine of a 60-year-old man. Um, So bone issues his entire life. He wore braces as a child, but he had a love for baseball. And according to the film, he had a mad swing, an incredible swing. And all he ever wanted to do was play in the majors. So this story really is about just that determination in his faith and his pursuit of his dream in spite of the odds, in spite of, you know, his disability, in spite of his father, whom he loved, adored and admired, who was a preacher played by Dennis Quaid. Um... Telling him, no, you can't do it. And, it, it, you know, a bit of a father trying to be realistic and say, you know, his son clearly is not able to do this. Him also being a father who has a very specific path in mind for his son and also being a father who's afraid of what could happen. Thinking of the worst case scenario, should he get hurt in the wrong way? But I'm getting ahead of myself. So this movie is called The Hill. This is a movie directed by... Lordy, Savannah, get your life together. Jeff Celitano. I'm pretty sure I'm saying his name correct. I mean, not correct, incorrect. I'm pretty sure I'm saying his name incorrect. This movie stars Dennis Quaid, Colin Ford, Joel Carter, Randy Hozier, Bonnie Bedelia, Scott Glenn. So nice little cast. This is a faith-based film. It's a sports drama. I'm not going to keep you here super long. I feel like there's not much to say about this. Honestly, when it comes to Christian films, I get very frustrated because there's no reason for Christian films to be bad of any kind. Like excellence should be um, a priority, not just, you know, making sure you get it out a good message of faith. Obviously that's important. That's the goal. You want to be able to reach people of faith and also reach people who have no faith, um, give them something to connect to, to lean them in. But that doesn't mean that your film is less than in any way, shape or form. That doesn't mean you have a low quality film. And this is what I've come to expect from Christian films is message heavy, low quality. Like that's basically what we're getting from a lot of Christian films. But we've had a couple of Christian films that have come up in the last one or two years that have kind of broken that mold. Jesus Revolution, I thought was a great Christian based film and that we had a very heavy message, but we also had a quality film. These were well-written characters. It was a great plot, a little episodic in the beginning until we got to kind of the, um, the center point of our story where our two stories that were kind of running parallel to one another kind of crossed. And after that, it was a beautiful story that just kind of unfolded redeeming love that came out last winter um, was just kind of mid in terms of just quality of a movie, but it was a very raw and very honest movie. If you know anything about redeeming love, especially if you're a Christian woman and you are you were a Christian in like the 90s and going into the early 2000s, at some point someone said, you should read Redeeming Love, a movie about a prostitute 
um, based on the book of Hosea in the Bible. It's kind of the source material or inspiration for it. And it's very raw and honest about what goes on in this movie. Very, de- it's, it's rated R for a reason. And the movie does not shy away from that. And I thought that was amazing. So these movies, you had these two movies that came out within the last two years that are very raw, very honest. And also they're great movies of faith. So this movie, The Hill, is nothing like that. It's a great movie of faith, but it just lacks. It's too long for its own good. It's um, cheesy, cringy, and just kind of cheap in terms of dialogue. I am getting really, really tired of dealing with writers who are either... um, they're not from the South or it's been a long time since they've really been planted in the South because a lot of Southern dialogue is just so cliche and cheesy. Yes, Southern people speak in metaphors, but like that's not the entirety of our vernacular. It is just it gets really, really cheesy at times and it's kind of comical. Like they're really just kind of playing on a stereotype and almost this kind of romanticized fantasy of what the South is in terms of dialogue. It gets annoying for me. I'm sick of it. And that's a, there's a lot of that in the beginning of this movie, just very cliche, metaphorical speaking. That's indicative of the South, but not we don't talk like that 24-7. Yeah, we have some crazy sayings and metaphors and ways of expressing ourselves. I feel like the South, we're very dramatic people, but come on now, be realistic here. And you know, just the typical pitfalls of a Christian movie that really get annoying for me. Um, you know, you have the wife of um, Dennis Quaid's character. Dennis Quaid plays pastor um, James Hill, father of Ricky Hill. His wife, Helen Hill, played by Joelle Carter, at one point gives this impassioned speech, you know, defending her husband. And of course, as she's giving this impassioned speech, she's sinner in, you know, sinner in the camera. And the 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 slight dolly in to her face with the cheesy, you know, uplifting music in the background. I'm like, oh, gag me with a spoon. Come on, y'all can do better than this. So it, I mean, it is what it is. It's exactly what you expect from your typical Christian film. It's very cheesy in terms of dialogue. The movie itself is too long. I think it was 45 minutes too long. They dragged his childhood out just too much. I think there should have been more focus on him as an adolescent because that's when the problems really started to take root for him. And the problem was, was we knew Ricky very well in this movie as a kid. We didn't really get to know him all that well as an adolescent. That bugged me. There was a lack of balance in terms of his life. This is his life story. We're getting more of his childhood than his adolescence, but his adolescence is where things really took off. That's where the story really took a turn. That's where the climax of the story is, is in his adolescence. And we don't get enough of it. So that bugged me. Um, There were scenes in this movie that definitely could have been left on the cutting room floor. There was no need for it. It was just pointless. It was like they really, I I understand that frustration, especially when you're very impassioned about a project. You want to keep everything. Everything is near and dear to your heart. The editing process can be very brutal and it's very personal because you want everything to be in the story. Everything as far as you're concerned is important, but sometimes it holds the story back. So when it comes to editing, I try to show a little bit of grace because I understand as a writer, the process of editing and you can realize that this thing, while it's beautiful and it's good, it doesn't fit. So I have a little bit of empathy there. So, but there are some scenes that just could have been left on the cutting room floor. I'm sorry. The acting was kind of okay. It was, again, typical Christian acting. Here's the thing about Christian characters in film. A lot of them are so hell-bent on making sure that you see Christians a certain way. Instead of showing Christians as being very real people with their own set of flaws, instead they portray Christians as Christian as the way Christians want to be seen. Does that make sense? And I mentioned this about Jesus Revolution, how I loved how they showed Christians as very real people with their own flaws, no different than anybody else, not this this image of perfection that they want to portray or they aspire to be because that's Christianity, right? It's sanctification, becoming more like Jesus. And we, we're seeing a lot of perfection. There's exaggerations here. There's very, very perfect and very, very imperfect and not very many in between. And the fact is most of us human beings, those of us who love Jesus and even those of us who don't, we live in the gray. That's where life is. It's in the gray. It's not in the black and the white. It's in the gray. And there's 
a lot of black and white here and a little bit of gray. James Hill, who played by Dennis Quaid, is very much in kind of the black. He's not so much our antagonist, but he's definitely a source of conflict for our main character, Ricky Hill, played as an older gentleman by Colin Ford, and that he is just constant conflict. There really is no nuance to him. His character is is just constant conflict, constant pushing. And I felt like they could have dragged the human out of him a little bit more, but they didn't. Um, I don't know. I was just, I I hate weak character development. I hate lazy character development. I hate flat character development. I love humanity on screen. And I feel like this lacked a little bit of that humanity because so much of it is about pushing the message. That's the focus here. That's the point. That's the goal is to make sure that whatever message they're trying to send in this movie is being told. So the quality of the movie gets kind of pushed to the wayside. It's annoying for me. I don't watch a whole lot of Christian movies because of it. Christian movies for me in terms of watching them, because I do have a subscription to pure flicks it's something to play um while i'm cooking dinner if that makes sense just something to play in the background um familiar sometimes when i need a little bit of a pick me up i need a that positive message i'm not looking for anything to watch that's going to keep me entertained but something that's going to remind me of my own faith pure flicks comes in handy for that but if i'm going to the movies and i want to be entertained i'm not going to go see a christian film that's not what i'm seeing it for why did i see this movie because i want to actually start reviewing more christian movies because a lot of my a big chunk of my audience is christian and i want to challenge the christian movie industry to make quality films even if i have to do that on my own even if i have to do that by myself I want to challenge the Christian community within the film industry to make quality films. Yes, I understand the message is important, but like you don't have to sacrifice the quality of a movie just to send a good message. Hollywood does it all the time. Hollywood manages to send amazing messages while having quality films. You can do it too. Like... I understand the point is to be countercultural, but you don't have to be that countercultural. Now, in terms of the message of the film, here's the thing about this movie, because, you know... I think with Christian films, you know exactly what you're getting. It just, it just, I think you have to ask yourself, what are you in this for? Why do you want, what are you looking for? What are you hoping to get? What are you hoping to learn? What do you, what, what aspects of your faith and about Jesus and God are you hoping to, to learn? I think those are the questions you have to ask going into the Christian movie because the chances of you getting a quality experience are slim to none. That's my opinion, but you know, do what you want, do whatever you want with it. So the message here really is about faith and perseverance and trusting God. And we have this young man who has a disease that should prevent him from doing much of anything, much less baseball. And yet he realizes that God has given him this ability, this gift when it comes to swinging a bat, this physical ability. And yet he is restricted because he can't, you know, do a full body rotation with the way his legs are. He has to make sacrifices. So it really comes down to trusting that God is no God knows what he's doing. God is in control and he's going to take care of you in the end. So this movie really is about keeping faith and staying faithful and staying rooted in faith. So there's that aspect of it. But ultimately, this movie is about trusting that God knows what he's doing, that God has a plan, even when it doesn't make any sense, even when it flies in the face of common sense, God knows what he's doing. God is a miracle worker. At one point, we have the wife in this movie played by Joelle Carter, her character, Helen Hill, looks at James Hill, Dennis Quaid, and says, you know, how many miracles is it going to take? Because, you know, talking about when he was born, they said he would never walk and he ran. You know, this, they said he'd never do this, but he does that. You know, he's, he, they said he'd never do this, but he's the best. And how many miracles is going to take for you to finally trust that God knows what he's doing with the son he entrusted to you? So there's that part of it. And I think the the message in the movie, I think it's a very, very beautiful one. I think it's one that's timely. And for me, it, it it's a good message for me to hear just given where I'm at in my life. So I did get something out of it. Don't get me wrong. The film did what it needed to do for me. I just wish the quality of the movie was better. I'm just sick of seeing movies, Christian films, not put forth the effort for quality in terms of writing, acting, even music. It, it's all the music is the same. I swear. It's almost like they just, you know, use the same music library to score the film. So quality messages, yes, but you don't have to have a low quality film to for the film to say something grand.
All right, parental units, this is the part where I answer your big question. Is this movie appropriate for my child? Now, this is a faith-based sports drama. This is geared to be a family film, clearly. So yeah, I think this movie will be all right for your kids. Now, in terms of themes that might be slightly questionable, um, there is tobacco use, not like cigarettes. Well, there is cigarette smoking. So cigarettes and tobacco use, like the, the nasty kind where they spit, that's that stuff. Um, alcoholism, domestic violence, these elements are all within the movie. So they're not heavy elements. They're not elements that you're going to see, you know, repeated throughout the film. They make a point and then they're gone. So there's that. Um, there is a kissing scene, but it's precious. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a family film for the most part. I don't think you're going to have any issues bringing your young kids to this because this is a faith-based film. So obviously they're wanting this to be something where Christ is at the center and it does that. So yeah, so definitely for my Christian listeners, I think this is perfectly fine for um, your family, for your children. But I think ultimately, once you go and see this, what I would recommend you do is if you're planning to see this movie is, you know, see the movie in the afternoon, like maybe a three o'clock after your movie is done. Cause this movie's like two hours and six minutes, go to dinner and have a conversation. I think there are a lot of conversations that can be had stemming from this movie where the movie lacks in quality it is heavy in conversation starters. So that's my recommendation. If you're wanting to see this as a family, go to like a mid afternoon, maybe a matinee and go get something to eat after and talk. That's what this movie is kind of designed for. That's what a lot of these Christian films are designed for is to start conversations and ultimately lead to people wanting to share their own faith. That's the point. That's the purpose. Hope that's helpful. Want to advertise on this podcast? Check the episode description to see how you can be featured on the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to me rant and rave about yet another movie. So just to sum it all up, that was The Hill starring Dennis Quaid, Colin Ford. A typical Christian movie, message heavy, quality light, but it's a great conversation starter. So if you're going to see this movie... I highly recommend going to like a matinee or mid-afternoon, going to get something to eat afterwards with your family and talk. I think that's what this film is built for. It's built to start conversations. So what's coming up? So I'm seeing The Equalizer 3 next week. Um, And then I think I'm going to see Expendables 4 next week. I didn't even realize there were so many. I didn't realize there was a third Expendables. I knew there was two. But uh, these movies are kind of built like standalones. You don't really have to watch all three of them or all four or however many to really get a gist of what's going on. So funny story, though, because the first time I saw Expendables, the first one, I was actually working in a movie theater and working in a movie theater. I worked with mostly boys and we're all about the same age, like early 20s at this time. And honest watching these were my these were some of my best friends at the time. You know, these are guys I spent a lot of time with, hung out with, we partied together, what have you. And, um, you know, and working at a movie theater, we would watch a lot of movies together for free. That's one of the perks of working at a movie theater, at least back then, because everything was 35 millimeter print. So we had to screen everything to make sure the film was okay. Now, what they're doing in this digital era, I don't know. I don't know how they pre-screen movies at all. No idea. Um, I imagine they probably do just to make sure the runtime is correct because, fun fact, a lot of times the runtime that the studio sends the theater is not correct. Again, another tangent. This actually happened with the next Karate Kid. They told us a movie was like an hour and 45 minutes. It was like two hours and 20 and by that time, by the time we realized the runtime was wrong, it was too late to fix anything. We'd already had, we already had our show times in the system. People were already buying tickets online that we couldn't fix it for that week. We had to wait until the next Thursday to readjust the show times to fit the correct runtime. But yeah, that's, that was annoying. Very annoying. Um, so yeah, when I watched the movie Expendables 4 with the guys that I worked with, it was the most fun it was the most fun. They're just, they're just a different group of, they're just different. You know, that age group of men, they're, they're fun, they're animated, they're goofy, they're a little immature, but they made the movie experience that 
much better. I think those are the one of the re reasons why I like the theater experience is because of the experience you get with community that you're not going to get anywhere else. With a group of strangers where you're all kind of doing the same thing, engaging in the same thing, and it, it's a collective experience that's unlike anything else. And that's what I got from Expendables when I watched it the first time. And I don't know why I'm rambling, but yeah, I just felt like sharing all of that. So yeah, Expendables 4 coming out now. The Nun has a limited release, I think, next week, and I am just, I might. There there may be a possibility of me seeing that. I know there's a movie that came out this weekend, that's coming out this weekend with Liam Neeson called Retribution. I think it's called Retribution. And I kind of want to see that. Not really. I'm not a big action fan. At this point with, you know, I have four reviews that came out this week, plus uh, so I've had five episodes come out this week. It's been a very big week for me. I've had, a, I've gotten a lot done. Um, that's the perks of not being in my own bedroom and being in a space that's not entirely comfortable and not entirely relaxing. I'm able to get so much done. So at this point, if I were to see Retribution, it would be for fun. Would I do a review on it? Yeah, definitely. But it, it would be for fun and it, action's not my forte. That kind of action really isn't it. Unless I am a huge, huge, huge fan of the actors involved. I like Liam Neeson, but he's not like, I'm gonna go see a movie because he's in it. Like it's not that way with me and him. So the goal right now is to figure out if there's a way for me to see The Nun early. I know it's a limited release, I think next week or the week after. So that's the goal, crossing my fingers. One of these AMC theaters here, show it, show it. There are three AMC theaters within the Charlotte city limits. You have one that is on South Boulevard, one that is North Lake Mall. That's the one that was closest to me when I lived here. Um, that was my go-to movie theater. And then Concord Mills, which is an outlet mall, has a theater attached. So perfect location. I golly, I'm so old. I remember when they built that theater, if you live in the Charlotte area. Yeah, I think I was in middle school when they finally completed construction on Concord Mills. But yeah. That's what's coming up. And also, also, I have something special planned starting in September. Um, you'll know it when you see it. I'm really excited. I I'm wanting to do more than just, you know, regular reviews for upcoming features. I'm wanting to do more. I'm wanting to talk more. And so I I'm planning some things out and I'm trying to get a lot of that done while I have so much time here outside of the state of Louisiana. So keep your fingers crossed, say some prayers for me that I can get, I'm really excited. I'm planning things out and recording for that starts next week. I cannot wait. Can you hear it in my voice? I cannot wait. So thank you once again for tuning in, listening. If you're going to see the hill, um, let me know your thoughts. If you get to the end of this podcast and you hear this question, I want you in the comment section on YouTube, go to YouTube because those are the comments that I can see pretty much in real time. Let me know your favorite Christian movie, if you have one. One that you would recommend me seeing, because again, I'm not a big fan, but I get the message. I, I, they do what they need to do, but in terms of like entertainment value, they're not my go-to. So let me know your favorite Christian or faith-based movie. Just drop it in the comment section. Would love to hear from you. Let me know what you think. I love you all so much. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you for listening. And I will see you next time. Thank you.